Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to share to you the effective habits that you should develop in order for you to have a clean home. Hello lovelies, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Trisha. I make cleaning, organizing, and lifestyle videos. If you're into these kinds of stuff, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Click the red button down below. And you can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Their links are in the description box below. Today, I'm going to share to you eight simple habits that you can start today for you to maintain a clean home. Having a clean home provides a positive effect not just on your physical being but also on your mental being as well. A clean home is a safe home. Do you notice that you can get sick easily when your environment is dirty and when your house is a mess? Do you notice that sometimes it's difficult for you to concentrate and most often you see yourself getting annoyed so easily with just anything just because your surroundings is full of mess therefore not giving you a peaceful vibe. I remember back when I was a kid, my mom, who's a single mom by the way, and she works all day five days a week. She would get mad at us every time she goes home after work because all she can see is a house full of mess. That's when I developed the habit of cleaning the house regularly before she gets home from work because I don't want her to get mad at us every time. And now that I'm all grown up, I finally fully understand why she would get mad at us back then. Who would want to go home to a messy house. I'm sure I'm not one of them. This is why it's important to have a clean home. And in order for that to happen, you should regularly clean your home. But what if I tell you that you can maintain your home's cleanliness not just by regularly cleaning it, but by also developing a habit in order to keep it clean. Especially during these times, it will not only help reduce the spread of coronavirus, it will also help reduce the spread of other germs and bacteria and other viruses as well. A habit is defined as a behavior that is repeated so often that it no longer requires a conscious thought. So if you develop a cleaning habit, it would make your cleaning easier and you'd probably barely notice that you're actually cleaning. These habits will probably take a long time to develop before you start doing it subconsciously. So for the first few times, you should be mindful in performing these habits repeatedly in order to firmly establish it into yourself. So what are these habits? The following are the habits that you should develop in order for you to have a clean home. What do you do when you first get up in the morning? Me, after I get up, I drink water first and go to the bathroom and wash my face. After that, I make sure to fix our bed when I go back to the bedroom. They say not to fix your bed right away because the millions of dust mites in it should be exposed first to air and sunlight for them to become dehydrated and die out. After eventually fixing your bed, you'll notice that even if you haven't cleaned up the rest of your room yet, it does make a whole lot of difference in making your room clean. Also, making your bed would give you that sense of pride that you've accomplished one thing at the start of your day, so congratulations for that! A lot of traditions from different countries consider it rude to not take your shoes off in entering one's house. It is, for obvious reasons, being implemented to a lot of houses even nowadays. The first reason is there are a lot of dusts and dirt, bacteria and toxins outside that you can prevent to bring inside your home by just simply taking your shoes off before entering the house. Aside from bringing in the outside dirt, most shoes have abrasive soles which can damage your floors by scratching it. By keeping your floors free from scratches, it would be easier for you to maintain your floors good and with less wear and tear. And the last one is because it is a sign of respect for the people you're visiting. You are respecting the hosts, the environment or the structure, and others that use the place. This is according to interior designer Jenny Nakao Hones, co-author of Feng Shui Truths, Myths, and Misconceptions. Taking your shoes off doesn't mean that you have to go barefoot inside your house. While some people choose to go barefoot, some of us choose to wear slippers instead. 
In our house, we wear slippers because our living area has floor tiles, so it would feel cold if you walk barefoot inside. And since our bedroom has a carpet floor, me and Dennis would take our slippers off before entering our room because there's no point in wearing it inside a bedroom with carpet floors. This would also keep our bedroom floor from accumulating more bacteria and germs, which we may have had in our living area, and we know how easy it is for our shoes or slippers to carry them. So, the point is, you don't have to go barefoot inside your house, you can wear slippers which is exclusive to use inside your home. Doing your laundry every day would make you hate doing laundry even less. How is it possible when if you do it every day, then it's more probable for you to hate it even more, right? Well, this is how I see it. Let's say you do your laundry once every two weeks, right? You wear your clothes every day and every day your dirty clothes pile up and by the end of the two weeks you have a whole pile of dirty laundry. Is that enough to motivate you in doing your laundry? I bet it would make you hate doing it even more. Seeing it as a whole big task to do on a weekend. Instead of doing something else, you'd have to do it instead. This is why it's important to you to do your laundry every day. By doing so, you'd actually save a lot more time because you could do it, let's say, before you take your breakfast. All you have to do is load the light-colored clothes, for example, in the morning before you start the rest of your day. And then just leave it in the washer doing its job and then you can proceed with your day. To give you more idea about it, you can watch my laundry routine video. I'll put the link in the description box below. I just want to say that it doesn't have to be literally every day, like 7 days a week. It all depends on how you sort your laundry. Like if you'll watch my laundry routine video, you'll see that I do my laundry 4 days a week. By doing so, it keeps our house clean because we don't have a whole pile of laundry distracting us. Also, remember that these are dirty clothes, so do you really want to keep all the germs and bacteria in your house for so long? Whether it be after you cook or before you leave the house, you should develop the habit of tidying up or cleaning up before leaving a room in your house or leaving your house entirely. Instead of waiting for your house to get all dirty, why not just clean a little bit at a time? This would actually make cleaning less stressful and less of a task, taking up a large part of your day and more of a tiny spare of your time. This way, you don't have to spend the whole day doing general cleaning, rather you just spare a little bit of your time each day to keep the house clean. What I usually do is every time I do some major cooking like cooking for dinner for example, I make sure that every time I'm finished with for example the chopping board and the knife, I wash it right away. That way, no dirty dishes would pile up before we start eating our dinner. Also, every time I use something like scissors for example, I make sure to put it back to where it belongs after I use it. These simple tasks would actually make your house a whole better place to stay at because you lessen the accumulation of dirt and clutter. Also, whenever we leave the house for grocery shopping for example, I always make sure that our room is completely tidied up so that when we get home later that day, we'd feel completely relaxed and comfortable in our own home. So, since I'm always making sure our room is always clean before we leave the house, my husband would now help me make the bed and tidy up the room because he knows that we can't leave unless the room is clean. Back in the Philippines, I grew up using a broom and a dustpan in cleaning our house. There's an old superstition in the Philippines and I don't know if you guys still follow it until now. Old people said it's bad luck to sweep at night. I never believed that for many reasons I don't want to get into but I always sweep in the morning after I've had my breakfast, after washing my dirty dishes, and after I've washed the dishes that night. Keeping the floors clean and free from dust in the morning and before going to bed is actually a good habit to develop because it will not only keep your house clean but safe for your children to play with as well. I love schedules. I have a schedule for almost every task that I do. I have a schedule on when to do the laundry, when I should clean the bathroom, what specific day to vacuum the floor, 
specific day to wash and change our sheets, everything. The good thing about having a schedule for cleaning tasks is, first, this way you make sure that you don't miss a task. This is actually the main reason why I schedule my tasks. I'm so forgetful, but I also don't want to miss performing a task, especially when it comes to cleaning. So, in order for me to not miss a task, I schedule everything. Second is, if you have a schedule, you don't get to do the same thing twice. Again, if you're forgetful like me, you sometimes forget that you already did something and now you're about to do it again. Last is, it also helps you identify how often something is to be cleaned. Like for example, if you don't have a schedule on when to change your sheets, you'll probably change and wash your sheets after two weeks and then after that you'll change it again after a month which is not good at all. So, it's important to have a schedule on when to change your sheets that way, you'll know that you already have to change it. Like, let's say my schedule is to change your sheets every week. That way, I'm sure that I have fresh bed covers every week. The thing to remember about this is that you should have a specific day and to make it better, you should have a specific time as well on that day on when you should perform the task. It may not be an exact time, but if you just set a day for it, you'll end up procrastinating and pushing the scheduled task up to the very end of the day until you don't have any time for that day anymore. And then you'll end up rescheduling it and not doing it at all. This one, I feel like I don't have to explain further why it's important for us to donate. But what I'm going to explain is how important it is for us to declutter. Decluttering is a very tedious process. It involves not only our physical being but also our emotional being as well. There are a lot of sentimental stuff that we don't want to remove from our lives because it reminds us of a lot of happy memories from our past. The thing to remember is, in order to have new opportunities or new space, you have to get rid of old and used stuff because they'll take up too much space in your house which would make your house cluttered and therefore messy. Having a cluttered home also affects our mental state because all these stuff that we see inside our house serves as distraction from our minds to even think or concentrate. If you're not willing to donate, then you should consider selling them. This way, you know that you'll get something out of removing that thing in your life, making it easier for you to throw unused stuff away. There are already a lot of online sites where you can sell your items, and one of these is the Facebook Marketplace. Make use of these available technologies in order to make your life better. I have already discussed this in my previous video, how to make your house smell fresh and clean. I'll put the link in the description box below so I don't want to discuss this elaborately in this video. I just want to add that even if you have air conditioning in your house, remember that too much air conditioning makes the air inside the room very dry which may lead to dryness and irritation of the throat membranes. Too much of anything is never good for anybody. Nothing can beat the power of nature and its fresh air, so we should make it a habit to welcome it into our own home. So that is it for this video. I hope I have given you enough information on this topic, and I hope that I have convinced you enough in developing these habits in order for you to have a clean home all the time. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have any other habits that you have developed along the way. I would love to hear and learn from you guys as well. Just remember that these actions will take a while before they form into a habit. You should consciously perform them every time in order for them to become a routine. And I promise you, once you develop these habits, you'll barely notice that you're doing them at all, which is even better because you're keeping your house clean without any effort. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. If you like this video, please give this a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. And also please subscribe to my channel. And also you can follow me on Instagram and my Facebook account. Their links are in the description box below. I hope you like this video and see you on the next one. Bye! You